Thank you very much. Yeah, this this um, talk kind of, I guess, it focuses a lot on um, what has hitherto been described as the gang mineralogy. Um, in order to try and understand um, some of the aspects of this quite unique um, deposit that uh, Mark's got his hands on. And so it was supported by um, Talga and also the researchers in business scheme, which is um, government uh, kind of funding for small and medium enterprises that's kind of been through a, a few, uh, few changes since then. So uh, just as a bit of an outline, I'll, I'll talk very briefly about the regional setting and then um, look at some of the variations at the, the core scale, the kind of centimetre scale in the chemistry in um, the samples that came from Nunasvara and then um, look in a bit more detail at the microstructures and the, uh, the kind of thermal, the metamorphic history and the implications that that has for the, the graphite and then kind of discuss a bit about the carbon isotopes in the, of the graphite, how that compares to other deposits, and, uh, and kind of conclude. So this is a, a, um, a regional uh, kind of overview, there we are. So this is Sweden, we're up here in, in northern Sweden, um, and um, this is the, the Karuna iron ore district, and the, uh, the Nunasvara deposit sits down here, this is the intrusion, um, over which is the the, um, the kind of host metasedimentary layers are are domed, as Mark was saying, um, and there's a whole bunch of of intrusions of various ages. The um, the kind of best guess protolith age um, for these rocks is about 2.14 um, billion years, and that's um, based on intrusives that that intrude the the metasedimentary pile, um, and then they were metamorphosed about 1.9 billion years ago. Um, with subsequent kind of hydrothermal alteration with uh, the intrusion of, of, of a bunch of these granites that are kind of shown in red on here. So there's going to be a whole bunch of these kind of images which show variations in um, various chemical elements um, and this is data obtained um, by various sources. This one's from a, a micro XRF uh, mapper which um, measures uh, 25 micron um, pixel spacing uh, the, the chemistry of, of the uh, the sample. And so you can see here, this is a bit of core that's about um, seven centimetres long. And as Mark said, um, the samples we looked at were kind of picked um, for kind of contrast between um, the veins and to kind of look at the, the multi-stage history of this um, of this deposit. So here in red, the, um, the variations in potassium you can see this kind of variation in the in the texture across the core and a whole bunch of of different um, veins. And actually, the um, the vein mineralogy is is very similar to to that of the the host rocks in many places. It's kind of um, mica, um, uh, feldspar, and 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 biotite. In uh, if I can get the little thing, yeah. In this area here, there's a there's a small um, vein which is sulfide rich, um, which is actually um, quite atypical of, of most of the host rocks, um, and that's that's one thing about about this deposit. There's there's not a whole whole lot of sulphide around, and so we can kind of start piecing together the the history of the these rocks by by looking at the the different vein um, microstructures. So uh, another sample here. This is a, a similar technique. We're we're showing chlorine in red, and this is um, late um, scapolite alteration. Scapolite was mentioned earlier in in the, the African context, I think. So it's this um, chlorine and, and carbonate bearing, um, uh, calcium, aluminium, silicate. Um, and that's, uh, that's kind of distributed around these fractures. And we've also got um, some uh, potassium enrichment here, which is um, kind of K-Feldspar that goes along with this, this scapolite. I'll show you more details of those later. And you can kind of see in the, um, in the background to this core, the iron variation shown here in, in the green color kind of picks out the original sort of layering um, within these deposits. And there's another one of these veins that has a bit more sulfide in over here, um, which is, is iron rich. And there's another set of, of slightly more subtle veins that cross cut at kind of a low angle. And those have this finely um, disseminated kind of green color and, uh, and a quite graphite rich. So a, a final sample just to kind of uh, show the variation. This has a bit more of this um, kind of uh, 
low angle um, uh, veins with the disseminated iron. Um, and these have, again, minus, minus scapolite alteration, which you can kind of see in this red. This is now calcium, um, but there's also bits of albite. Um, and this, uh, the, the primary layering that picked out by these um, variations in the, the iron within the, the matrix is also quite visible in here. Um, in this, this sample and the last one, uh, one thing that's kind of quite noticeable are these kind of round um, blebs, which are quite iron rich. Um, outside kind of a, a few tens of uh, or 10 millimeters or so away from this main scapolite vein but also kind of get altered um, and those we're going to kind of infer um, about the, the kind of metamorphic history uh, a bit later on. So then um, one advantage of this technique kind of mapping the variations in the chemistry is that you can see how multiple elements um, relate to each other and so if we just kind of change shift the color scheme here now the chlorine, which is, again is picking out the scapolite alteration, which is actually very minor in these rocks considering there's a, a regional scapolite event, um, is very, very localized a, around this vein. But we've also got um, evidence of, of copper in these kind of um, veins that are horizontal in, in this image. And, and that may very well tie to the, the things like the chalcopyrite um, and, and other element mobility that, that Mark mentioned. So now, if I can make this work. Um, so we're going to kind of, we took these, these core samples and um, imaged them in 3D using X-ray com computed tomography. So hopefully there's a video. So this video of this sample, and, and what this is showing, um, if it starts, is um, are these different veins. So the, the technique picks out um, very nicely the, the kind of diff the variation in the mineralogy. So you can see that, that the, the veins are picked out quite nicely. This view now is just isolating some of these sulfides. And you can see the sulfides are all um, completely restricted to the veins and, and there's hardly any distributed um, through the main matrix of the rock. So the, the sulfide is not um, is necessarily associated with the deposition, but actually um, in, is localized in some of these vein sets. And this, this technique can kind of be used at a variety of scales um, down to submicron uh, pixels. So just to kind of take a bit more of a detailed look, this is now SEM-based um, chemistry that shows the microstructure. And in all these images, the graphite um, is shown as black. So this is kind of the, the uh, bog standard kind of background uh, matrix microstructure with um, albite. Uh, so feldspar shown in, in this green color. Um, and then we've got uh, the, the biotite and cave feldspar in this kind of orange and, and the quartz um, in green. And so you can see the, quite nicely the, the distributed nature of the, um, of the graphite um, throughout the matrix here and, and kind of uh, forming a network um, through the, the gang mineralogy. And that seems to be what's giving the, this kind of unique um, conductive property to these rocks is that you have this nice, well-developed graphite that is just kind of ubiquitous throughout, um, throughout the rocks. So just having a bit of a closer look at the graphite itself, um, up here we have an SEM image where the, the, uh, the silicates are, are in gray and the graphite is in black. And you can see a number of different domains. This is a bit of one of the veins up here um, with the alteration associated with it. And then this is the kind of more usual matrix. And then we have some of these graphite-rich veins um, which have silicate cores um, and it's kind of enriched um, graphite margins. And then kind of coming down here, this is a four micron scale bar down here. So we've got these um, graphite flakes that are kind of four up to maybe 10, 20 microns long. Um, in, in some areas within the rocks, especially the, the kind of graphite rich parts, there is some evidence of uh, minor deformation um, but these are kind of um, restricted to the, the kind of the graphite rich bits. Um, and I'm not sure, oh yeah, you can see. Um, so these kind of, um, the silicate phases here are picking out where the graphite's kind of been folded. And, uh, and you can see the effect on the, the kind of uh, size of the grains. Um, we're beginning to kind of slightly reduce the, uh, the grains in this area. 
So going kind of back to the matrix mineralogy again, we've got some of these graphite rich veins with the, the disseminated sulfides and these blebs here, which we saw in the, um, in the micro XRF imaging. And the, the kind of element associations show that we have um, cave feldspar um, centers with, with chlorite uh, around the outside in this kind of matrix of, of albite quartz, minor, minor biotite, and again, the graphite that's distributed ubiquitously through the, through the samples. Um, there's also um, titanite here, which is, um, I've been chatting with the, the Geological Survey of Sweden, and they're, they're kind of currently um, remapping a lot of the area in detail, because it's kind of an area of interest from the, for them, and they're interested in kind of dating these things to, to understand exactly um, kind of which, which events are associated with these minerals, and titanite is one particular target of theirs. So just having a look at kind of some of these veins, and, and as Mark said, the, the whole deposit is not, not shot through with the veins like these samples are, but actually they provide kind of a nice context for, for understanding the various um, events that happen in, in the region. And so we have these, these blebs here, which are kind of um, cut, cross-cut by this uh, graphite-rich veins with disseminated sulfides. And then, again, cross-cut um, by these other, this other vein material um, with albite, um, K-feldspar, and, and these kind of nice pure graphite, um, graphite minerals here. Another example here where we've got albite that's been replaced by later K-feldspar. So kind of this multi-stage um, uh, replacement of, of the uh, of the material um, with the ongoing uh, fluid flow but you can see that that's also associated here where you've got this nice um, relatively coarse uh, graphite um, that's that's hosted within these these vein structures the sulfides are also beginning to be um, kind of slightly oxidized um, and and there's sort of maybe some very very minor late um, carbonate alteration which is consistent with things like the scapolite um, forming as well. So just kind of um, a, a bit of a detail in one of these um, graphite rich um, areas, there's kind of minor intergrowth of the chlorite, which is kind of important in terms of um, discussing the, the genetics of the, this uh, graphite that forms in these veins, and I'll come back to that later. Um, but it's also got, we've also got the scapolite here as well. As I said earlier, a lot of the, um, the vein mineralogy um, is, is similar to, to the matrix. We just kind of undergo a, a, coarsening, um, a coarsening event um, as, the, as the veins are forming. So this, these images just show the, the alteration around some of these um, scapolite um, bearing veins. So the, the chlorine, which kind of indicates that the scapolite is shown in red um, with the, the vein with the, the coarsening of the, the graphite. Um, that's already kind of distributed through the matrix and the, the scapolite alteration. And once again, the veins aren't necessarily always very wide. Here we've just got a kind of thin graphite thing um, within the graphite matrix um, and this kind of alteration around the outside. So looking at the metamorphism to kind of understand how these things work, um, it appears that the graphite in the matrix is, is there early. It's part of this kind of metasedimentary sequence and it's been cooked up. Um, and then we've had this kind of veining um, thing, a veining event over the top. The, um, the, the blebs within the, the rocks seem to be um, consistent with forming some kind of porphyroblast mineral like garnet, garnet or cordiorite. And if we look at this, um, this, uh, basically phase diagram calculated for one of the, um, the uh, vein uh, one of the rock compositions um, that we've examined. We can see about 600 degrees and, and five kilobars, which is kind of lower amphibolite facies uh, metamorphism consistent with the kind of regional picture. We end up with the kind of chlorite biotype pledge um, and this, these cordiorite things. So I'm going to infer that the um, the blebs, which are now chlorite, K-feldspar, um, altered, were um, kind of started off life as, as small cordierites. And then, in terms of the vein, um, the vein temperatures, um, the, the the mineralogy in many of the veins, this chlorite, um, albite, K-feldspar mineralogy, 
um, is consistent with them forming at slightly lower kind of green schist basis temperatures. So I think we've got um, kind of cooking up of the uh, of the meta sedimentary sequence the, the to form the graphitic schists, um, and then this lower temperature kind of fluid flow event, um, possibly in, uh, associated with intrusion of, of the, uh, the granitoids. So one thing you can look at um, with with uh, graphite and, and graphene uh, for a number of reasons is is using uh, Raman thermometry. And so this takes a laser, um, fires it at the uh, at the graphite, and measures what the shift in the um, the wavelength is of the uh, of the the beam um, due to the the bonds within the the material that you're shining it at. And this is the kind of spectrum you get up here. So this is the the energy shift, um, or the, the the wave number shift, um, and this is the intensity. And for for nice crystalline graphite. Um, what, and what you want is a, a large peak um, around 1580. So this is this G peak in this spectrum here. Um, as you go from from truly amorphous kind of organic material um, to to graphite, as it as it goes up temperature and and gets kind of uh, nicely crystalline, this G peak um, increases at the expense of the the D the defect peaks um, also located within the spectrum. And so you can deconvolve the relative um, areas of the D and G peaks, and this has been calibrated um, as a thermometer. So we can get estimates of the temperatures that these rocks have reached. And so looking at the, the various vein and, and matrix graphite, we're kind of up around the, the 550 mark um, for, the, for the highest temperatures um, within the matrix. Um, and the, some of the vein material is kind of giving us lower temperatures. And these are consistent with the kind of things that we'd expect based on the, the, the metamorphic modeling. We also um, looked, did a few um, samples of, of carbon isotopes, um, sampling both the, the material, the coarser material that was in the vein, but also the material um, that makes up the bulk of the graphite um, from the the matrix, and this is a plot um, largely taken uh, from the literature. It was published in uh, Geoscience Frontiers a few years ago um, with a whole bunch of different um, deposits on, and we've just added the, the Nunasvara um, deposit down here, looking at the different sources of, of the graphite. So we've got the kind of, um, the sort of organic, um, biogenic end of things, and then um, graphite that's derived from, from mantle and and other um, carbonate sources uh, significantly heavier. The interesting thing was that the the veins, uh, the, <coughs> the vein graphite here, and the the matrix was quite tightly clustered, um, and they had um, indistinct um, uh, carbon isotope signatures, <coughs> suggesting that the 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 material that's come in um, and crystallized within the veins is is probably sourced locally um, from from the same kind of uh, source as the, the bulk of the graphite that's within the, the matrix. So in terms of these veins, when we've had the fluid uh, fluid flowing in, um, it's, it's been a mixture of, of, of carbon, oxygen, and, and hydrogen, which is kind of shown on this, uh, this phase diagram here. And with, um, with, these, with these fluids, conventionally, in mineral deposits, you you um, expect precipitation from the fluid when you get a, a pressure drop, for example, um, when you get kind of um, veins opening. Um, these fluids um, behave um, a bit differently in that if this is your, your fluid composition um, represented by the dot, if you have a pressure drop, then the... Um, uh, the, the graphite saturation line actually moves um, further away from that composition. And so by in a, during a pressure drop, you don't actually get precipitation. So one good way of precipitating graphite, and this has been um, proposed for a, a number of the, the different uh, vein-hosted in particular deposits, um, is to actually um, remove one of these components from the, um, from the, from the fluid. So this is what's shown in, in C. So if five minutes cool. if the uh, if the initial composition of the fluid is represented by this dot, just here, 
then um, removing crystallizing scapolite removes CO2 from the fluid, which pushes the fluid composition in this direction. So we're being pushed away from this um, graphite saturation line. However, if we move, remove water from the fluid, um, the bulk composition is pushed this way, and we can actually supersaturate the graphite and, and precipitate it. And when you crystallize chlorite, which seems to be crystallizing along with the, um, with the graphite, that's exactly what you do. You remove water from the fluid. It's a hydrous mineral. Um, and so this, this seems where we've got this, these veining events, that seems to be what's, what's going on. So in summary, um, the, the bulk of the deposit shows this nice disseminated graphite um, that forms an inter interconnected network. And then we've got um, these veins which we can use to kind of help us um, understand the history of, and of the deposit. And, um, and they contain this kind of slightly purer graphite. There's a small amount of disseminated sulfide in these veins, although that's generally um, fairly rare throughout the rock. Um, the graphite seems to be from, from a biogenic source, or the, certainly the carbon isotope suggests so, and that it's been metamorphosed to kind of lower amphibolite facies um, during a, a regional metamorphism. And then it's been affected um, in, a, in a minor way by, uh, by kind of late fluids, which have, have crystallized the graphite um, as you remove the water as other minerals precipitate as well. So thank you.